Hi, I'm Rob of the Aquaponics Source. We're here at Pacific High School, which is part of Ventura Unified School District in Ventura, California. We just finished building a new uh, Flourish Aquaponic Farm in this 30 by 60 foot greenhouse. And Tanya and I want to uh, give you a quick little walkthrough of what we did here. Uh, so I'll let Tanya start off and she's gonna talk about the plant system. So to start with, we have our multi-deck nursery. And the beautiful thing about this is it's going to grow about 2,000, a little over 2,000 seedlings for this farm. Microgreens can also grow in here and starts even for the outside farm if necessary. Multiple tiers give us the ability to manage water flow for each one of these. Lights on each bed are individually uh, turn on, turn off. We can time it so that we can get water flowing to each one of these beds and grow a lot of seedling starts for this system. So all of our seedlings are going to come into the waist high elevated Groasis system. This one happens to be a six by 36 and we have two of them in this farm. And the seedlings are gonna go into these new transplant wraps. Uh, there's 162 holes so we can get a, a maximize all of our seedling production, they can grow out an extra two weeks here before they make a move out into the larger wraps. We can really maximize our production and therefore our harvest in a system like this. So the elevated waist high is really helpful. One, it's ADA compliant, but two, it's really good for our working height, for students, for teachers, for staff, for any farmer. Um, they can work very easily at this height. This particular system has enough cells or planting spaces that they're gonna get about 300 to 350 heads of leafy greens, lettuces, kale, shards, basils, all these wonderful, highly nutritious vegetables in this farm. That's about 18,000 a year. So that has some impact for the community. They're also going to use it as a business opportunity for the students to learn how to take this to the farmer's market or run a small CSA. And, and make this part of their entire programming. So we've talked about the elevated DWC. These are the media beds, and they're filled with clay pebbles, very traditional kind of setup. We can turn each bed on individually. We have tall stand pipes for when we have tiny plants. We have short stand pipes when we have big plants, like vining crops. We can turn them on and off, which gives us the ability to actually control the type of nutrients we put into each bed so we can allow phosphorus to absorb to make extra sweet tomatoes, for example. And we've got some pretty cool lights here that Rob's gonna tell you about. Yeah, so again, we're in Southern California, probably don't need a ton of grow lighting, but the thing is, the idea behind this farm is for it to be a fantastic teaching tool for the students, show them what they might encounter in the real world in a real commercial aquaponic farm. Um, and so these lights, these are a tried and true ARC 600 full spectrum LED grow lights. Uh, super powerful lights. We use them for a wide variety of crop production, you know, leafy greens, herbs, but also fruiting crops. Works great. They're so powerful, what we actually do is we mount them on a light rail robotic moving system. We actually track these lights back and forth across our grow beds. And so what it does is it allows us to spread out that very concentrated amount of light over a wider coverage area. Uh, so it allows us to use less electricity to provide light to all of our plants. A really efficient way uh, to either grow fully indoors or supplemental lighting in a greenhouse like this. All right, so here's our uh, heart of the system, the recirculating aquaculture system or RAS. This is where all the fish are grown and these are what provide our nutrients to grow all of our plants. Uh, so this system specifically is made up of three 300 gallon tanks. Um, we stuck windows in the tank so you can actually see the fish. Uh, not only is it really fun to see your fish, but it's a great way to uh, check out your fish health, make sure everything in the farm is running smoothly. Um, so again, uh, three 300 gallon fish tanks, each one individually controlled air and water. Uh, and then also uh, we have electric heat in this case, you know, we're in a very warm area, not expecting a ton of heat load, you know, it's not going to be very cold, so electric heaters are going to be fine. You know, they're planning on raising tilapia, and so we uh, designed the system around roughly 100 fish per tank, so we're going to be at about you know, 300 fish in the system. We'll be looking at about 450 to 500 pounds of tilapia harvested a year if we're really pushing this. Um, so, as we work our way down, uh, we get to the bead filter. Um, and so this is a Polygeyser PT6000 uh, automated bead filter. 
super cool. What it does is it does all of our mechanical and biological filtration in a single step. And the real reason we use this is because it has a tiny footprint. I mean, we're talking about maybe two and a half by two and a half feet um, in your farm where, you know, again, all of our filtration is concentrated to a single unit. So what that does is it allows us to use more space in the farm for plant and fish production, which is actually making you money. Um, you know, you're, <laughs> You're not going to make money off after having uh, a lot of different big tanks for filtration. So that's why we like this. It's very efficient. Um, and plus, the only maintenance is opening a valve. Sludge goes into a bucket and you close your valve, you're done. Cleaning your filter takes literally 10 seconds or less every day if, you know, when you're really rocking and rolling here. So not a whole lot of maintenance to it. Um, over here we have our, our dual plant and fish sumps and so this is what we like to do with our farms where we can operate it as a completely coupled aquaponic system where the water from the fish tanks goes to our plants and then back again or we can decouple it which is especially useful during startup when we have little fish maybe not enough nutrients um, and we can operate the fish system as a standalone recirculating aquaculture system and the plant system as a standalone recirculating hydroponic system. Again, really nice to have that flexibility. And then when we're ready, we couple the systems together with just a couple of valves, and it's just one big aquaponic system. Um, we have a freshwater top off here. So this is basically filtering chlorine out of the city water that this greenhouse is hooked up to. Uh, it works off of a valve in the sump and when water gets low, automatically lets in fresh water. So that's really nice. You never have to worry about your pumps running dry on you, things like that. Uh, so the last thing I want to talk about is our aerobic mineralization tank. So this is a 140 gallon tank. And what we do is we actually take our sludge from our filter and dump it into here. Uh, we have air going in there and bacteria are actually breaking down that sludge further and releasing nutrients. And periodically we'll let all the sludge and all the solids settle to the bottom of this tank and then we'll skim off the clear, clean water that's just jam-packed with nutrients. That goes back to our plant system and the plants get a nice boost. And because of this, our farms are zero discharge. No, nothing will ever go down the drain because of this system, which is really nice. Um, so that just about does it. Uh, thank you guys for checking this out. Again, we are at Pacific High School in Ventura, California, uh, and this is our new uh, 30 by 60 foot flourish farm model. Um, thank you.